You know, these organizations that take a, a, a child that is dying, terminal, no hope, and they say, what would you like to do? You certainly have one request in some, I want to go to Disney World. Well, what happens when a, a young girl that her whole body is so riddled with cancer, she's got just weeks to live, and she has one request. She said, I want to go to a place where I hear miracles happen. Well, the organization was staggered. I mean, they'd never had a request like that. She goes to this place where miracles take place, and she is no longer terminal from cancer. Cancer is no longer riddled her entire body. She goes on to live a great life. Well, what happened at this place that so many miracles are going on? What happened to the man that is the lightning rod for these miracles to happen? I want you to take a look at this man, Steve Hill. Growing up in northern Alabama, Steve Hill was bad news. Steve was ruthless, okay? I, when, I, when I say that, I mean ruthless, okay? <clears throat> he was a guy that was, uh, just like she said, he had, he had long hair, he was just oozing attitude. We were down and out drug addicts. Uh, we had tracks in our arms from shooting dope. Um, we were selling our blood at blood banks. Um, there, there were some crimes uh, that involved guns. Um, we just were not very good people. Uh, the, the thing is, is if, you know, if there was drugs involved and we wanted it, we'd find a way to get the money. And it didn't matter at whose expense it was. Arrested numerous times, and facing a lifetime of drug addiction, burglary, and prison. God led a man into Steve's path. I get this phone call from his mother, from Ann, and she says, uh, Vicar, you gotta get over here right away. And I said, what's wrong? She said, you know, Steve's having convulsions. You know, you, know, you need to come right now. His eyeballs, I mean, I'd never seen anything like it. But his eyeballs, even, you know, were just like jumping inside the sockets. I mean, they were just, he was in convulsions. He was scared. I mean, he was, that when the first time I'd met him, you know, he was all attitude. And at this time when I met him, he was just like, I mean, he was absolutely scared to death. And as soon as we prayed, you know, it was just like, it stopped just like that. He looked up to me, he looked up at me, he said, what happened? What happened? You know, just like that. And, and it was just like, the words came out of my mouth. They weren't even my own words, but they were, the words came out of my mouth. I said, the kingdom of God has come upon you. At a court hearing in which the police expected Steve to be sent away for years, an astonishing thing happened. He was sentenced into the custody of a caring Christian man at a drug rehab center. That first day that Steve walked on that property as a teenager in 1969, it was a divine appointment. I didn't know where it was gonna to come to. And I never dreamed that I would see this man again in 1975 in a Madison County Jail behind bars, and then to stand in a courtroom before a judge and say, God, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for this man? I don't know. I know that there's something changed in his life. And I remember when, judge, when the judge said, Steve, beyond my better judgment, and if you don't complete this program, you're gonna spend many years with penitentiary. I'm going to probate you to this ministry, Outreach Ministries. Steve went from being a druggie at a rehab center to being a missionary in Argentina and an evangelist around the world, ministering with his prayer partner and wife, Jerry, and blessed with a loving family. Steve is focused on seeing the lost meet Jesus. Uh, this is Sid Roth here, and I have that man that was the lightning rod for the miracle I told you about, and many, many other miracles, but Steve, here you are, a drug addict, out of control. I've never been a drug addict. It must be the worst thing in the world uh, to, to be living that kind of life. And uh, there's a simple prayer, and, and you said, what happened? Descri take me to that moment. What you know, happened? This, Sid, this is all about the supernatural. And as, as I was watching that, you know, tears welled up in my eyes because I experienced an encounter with God. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about an encounter with God. And there's people watching right now. That's, a, that's all you need is you need to have a, a connection with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Messiah, Jesus. 
And so I prayed, you know, I hardly had any belief in God, okay? I'd been on drugs and I, I was one of those I'd wake up in the morning, Sid, and going through convulsions. I'd wake up in the morning at three and four o'clock and go get a, a bottle of whiskey to calm my, my body down. And this went on for years. I was a mainliner running up narcotics. A thief had been arrested 13 times. I wanted out, but didn't know how. And there's somebody watching right now. It's not a drug addict, but your parents. And you're watching your son and your daughter going down the same road. I just want to let you know that there's hope. My mom prayed for me. When everyone else had given up, she got on her face and she prayed for me. When I called out on that day, Sid, when I called out to Jesus, all I said was, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it was the heart of a drug addict going, please release me from this prison. If you're out there, if you're somewhere out there, Jesus, God, speak to me. And the presence of God invaded that room, came into my body. And after three days of violent convulsions, it was as if I had never eaten an aspirin. I'd never done a drug, never smoked pot, never done LSD, never done heroin. I was brand new. I got up from my bed. I went outside and the, it was a beautiful October day in northern Alabama. The breeze was blowing. It was cool. The trees were swaying in the breeze. Listen, <laughs> you, you think it's too good to be true? You don't even know what truth is. Then he gets hepatitis and he's dying. And guess what? Miracle. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. <laughs> We now return to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth here with Steve Hill. He should have died. He should have been in prison. He should have been in a mental institution. But instead of those three paths, he walks in what he says is the presence of God and people around him have miracles. But after this wonderful being set free from drug addiction, and, uh, and I mean, instantly, it wasn't a gradual oh, thing. Sid, it was phenomenal. When I went outside, it was a brand new day. Everything, you know, the Bible says you must be born again. The Bible doesn't say you must join a church or you must get, you know, this or get that. It, you must be born again. Now, I believe in church attendance. I believe in all of that. But you've got to have an encounter with God. And there's someone watching right now. I want to let you know this, that, that you have had all kinds of experiences out there with religion, but you've never had an experience with, with Jesus Christ. Uh, those of you who, who uh, have been around the religious world. Maybe you've gone to church, synagogue, whatever. You've never had an experience with God. That's what I'm talking about. He changes your life forever. And, and that's what happened on that day. And, and that's why for 30 years now, I've been on fire for Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Everything's wonderful, yeah. but you're dying. He has hepatitis C. And there are people watching that have hepatitis C. Steve, uh, that's a fatal disease. Well, we're going to fast forward uh, many years, and, and I'm holding a meeting in Pensacola, Florida, where the power of God is coming down. Hundreds of thousands are coming from all over the world. In the midst of that, I get diagnosed with hepatitis C. The doctor sits me down like we're sitting right here, and he said, this is grave. Mm. He said, I said, what, 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 you know, because I'm a man of God. You know, he goes, well, uh, you, your, your blood is infested with uh, this, this virus and you're, you're going to, uh, it's going to kill you. And I said, well, you know, what, what are the symptoms? He said, you'll lose all your energy. And, and so the bottom line went back to the meeting that night, didn't parade in front of everybody and say that a woman walked up to me, Suzette Hatting walked up to me that night. I know her. She said, God spoke to me that you've got a sickness that is unto death. And I want to pray for you right now. She prayed for me. I immediately went back to the doctor. He did another blood check. I don't understand it. You're clean. And I had done two blood tests, did another one. You're clean. And now several years later, still clean. Jesus heals. But he went with his wife to Argentina and this totally changed his whole paradigm for what life is really all about. What did you see in Argentina? Well, the reason we went to Argentina is because of the encounter I had had 
My only goal, Sid, is for everyone on planet Earth to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. That's my goal, to have, have an encounter with God. And so we went to a fertile mission field, Argentina. What I saw there, I had never seen before. I went in 1984. A massive crusade was going on with a man by the name of Carlos Anacondia. I watched the man wave his hand across the crowd. Believe it or not, those of you watching at home, wave his hand across the crowd. Hundreds and hundreds of people that were with like a quarter of a mile away were struck by the power of God. They were touched mightily. And so I was watching people being delivered of demons, being set free, being healed, miracle signs and wonders in masses. And I said, Jesus, whatever this man has, I want it. And I walked straight up to Carlos and I went, Lay hands on me, pray for me. And I remember that night he laid hands on me. I fell out in the mud. When it, you say you fell out, what do you mean? I lost all my strength. You just fell over backwards? Yeah. Wait, no. Were you pushed? Did he push you down? Oh, in the absolutely mud? not. He no, just laid hands gonna, on you're, me. You're was, not going to lay in the mud no, on purpose. No, no, no. That's called a courtesy <laughs> fall, okay? And I'm not going to do it, okay? And so I, I fell to the ground. I'm laying there and, and I just sense the Spirit of God just sweeping over me. It's the anointing. I'm saying, God, I want that anointing. And people often are meetings, oftentimes, and this is a whole different. Me, a whole different program about the manifestations of the Spirit. One of the reasons people are, when, when they're touched by the power of God, is God wants to show them, this is totally me. And I've watched Muslims, other religious faith, get touched by the power of God. And when they're on the floor, they realize that this is the God that I want to have control of my life because He just took control of my body. I want you to pick one person out because then you went to a little sleepy southern town uh, in a church and the same thing started happening there. People were touched by the power of God. They walk in and it was like walking from heat into air conditioning. You could feel the difference. Uh, and tell me one, how many people uh, were either away from God or never knew God themselves that, that made a proclamation that Hundreds. they want? Hundreds of thousands. Hundred in Hundreds one tiny of thousands. Yeah, this it started in uh, Father's Day, 1995. Just uh, uh, I was supposed to be there two years. Ended up staying five years. Became known as the Pensacola Revival. Uh, to give me one person whose life was impacted, just a brief story. That's not fair. I know just it's not person. fair, but life isn't fair. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to take uh, one person. Okay, uh, one individual. Uh, she she. She came to the meeting. Uh, her name's Elizabeth. She came to the meeting because her sister kept bugging her. You got to come. You got to come. She was a party hound. You know, she didn't want anything to do with God. She came. When I gave the altar call, she didn't want to go. And her sister said, come on, man, come with me to the altar. Come with me to the altar. She was just one of these stoic, hard, just difficult people. She came forward, just stood there with her arms crossed, didn't want anything to do with God or me. <clears throat> and she came up uh, as she was standing there. I walked by. <clears throat> put my hand on her forehead. She was totally consumed by the presence of God and for four hours had a vision from God, fell to the ground, had a vision from God. Now she's married to a, a pastor, uh, loves God with all her heart, soul and strength, but God transformed her just like that. That is one of hundreds of thousands of stories. You're seeing an increase in the miraculous and what excites me is you're saying it's not just you. It's what everyone that knows God is supposed to do. Well, the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, these signs will follow them that believe. And I believe that we are in the season of the supernatural. I believe we've always been, but God, you know, we've chosen not to operate. I believe people need to be moving out in the spirit. They need to say, God, listen, I'm nobody. You're everything. I'm not the healer. You're the healer. Jesus, this man has cancer in the name of- I'll tell of you what. When we come back, we're going to find out how to move in these miracles, and you're going to get one. You're going, I proclaim to you, you're going to get a miracle. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Unbelievable a sleepy little southern town, a tiny little church. Steve Hill, how many people came to that one little building? Well, we started counting after a while because it was hard to believe, you know, and there was times said we had four and five overflow rooms. There was one week in the revival, we had to set up a tent outside and people sat and watched 
on a big screen on their cars in the parking lot. They'd stand in line hours in advance. Oh, all day uh, long. How many millions would you say? Four million people came to the meeting. Did you get that? Four million people from all over the world came because they knew they could walk into a building that had the presence of God. Uh, Let me tell you who else was stunned by it is uh, CNN 2020, Good Morning America, New York Times, Fox, all these channels, they came. And they were just stunned. They were saying, what gives? How can you do this? And, you know, I had a pat answer. You can't. You can't do this. This is either God showing up because people are smart. They're not going to come to a meeting where nothing's happening. But why? I, 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 here's a question I have for you. Why did people in front of cameras, in front of pe- thousands of people stand up and publicly say, I have done and, and, and even say what the, the sins, the horrible things they were doing. What power would make them want to do this? Because it was real. That's my answer to you. Okay, okay. let's look at one of these people that uh, came, one of the hundreds of thousands, they came forward to publicly proclaim they've been involved in sin, and he's doing something Jewish. It sounds not Jewish, it's baptism, but uh, we Jewish people invented it. It's called the mikvah. Let's take a look at that clip. I don't know what you felt tonight, friend, when that man stood in that baptismal pool. Brethren, I don't know where you are, and don't raise your hand. But with tears in his eyes, he said he committed adultery just a few months ago, seven or eight months ago, and he's lost his family. He's lost his children, and he's lost his business. Sin is horrible. I committed adultery, and I've lost everything in my life that has ever meant anything to me. My family, my two young children, and a wonderful job. And I'm here to say today that the Lord Jesus, this is your life. Tell me what you want me to do and let me do it. Now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Steve Hill. You are weeping. That, that's history. That's old. And Why that, are you weeping over him? Because Why? it's eternal. It's, it's history, but see, eternal. We spend our lives in the temporal. Okay, my job, my wife, my, you know, but. That's all temporal. Eternal is when God comes in and changes a life, transform them. Then, because we're going to live forever. Everyone that's watching this broadcast, you're you're never going to die. Your physical shell, yeah, it's going to deteriorate and die, but you're going to live forever. And there's only two places: heaven or down under or hell. And you've got a choice. And so these people are making these choices. They're going, you know, I want God. I want Jesus Christ. I want Him to change me, and they do. He does, and they make that change. And man, the testimonies, I, I'm uh, constantly. Listen, many people run forward when they hear a proclamation that the Messiah is real, that God loves you, that God doesn't condemn you. God is, has his arms reached out so wide to embrace you. Some of you have never experienced the arms of God hugging you. Some of you are going to experience that right now. Some of you are going to experience miracles. Miracles prove that the God of the invisible is very much alive in this realm. Tell me one miracle that comes to mind. The Pensacola Revival, the the greatest miracle, and you referred to it at the beginning, was um, the the most notable that, that I was a part of was a little girl that came to the revival. Uh, She had, uh, her whole body had been consumed with cancer. She was a skinny little thing, 16-year-old, had a baseball cap on, no hair, uh, was dying. 
and she was sent by the organization, one of the organizations that, 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 that they give the last request, whatever, you know, they'll send you anywhere in the world, all expenses paid, you and your family. And she said, I want to go to that meeting where there's miracles taking place. She comes down. We pray for her. Two weeks later, we get a letter from her, her dad. She just had an MRI, just had a complete scan of her body, not one cancerous cell anywhere and she's just recently graduated from university all her hair is back miracles like that took place all the time at the revival and many of them we didn't even know were taking place but we need to become this needs to become normal in the church world is, is signs and wonders okay i want you to pray for miracles to happen right now Right now, for those of you at home who don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, this is the most important part. He will change your life the way He changed mine. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Jesus, Jesus forgive, me. forgive me. I have sinned. I have sinned. I repent. I repent. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. My Lord. My Lord. And my very best friend. And my very best friend. Now, if you were serious, God did that. Now I want to pray for healing. Those of you that need a healing in your body, lay it wherever that, lay your hand wherever that part of your body is that's sick. And if you have a relative that needs healing, we want to pray for that person right now. A friend, in Jesus' name, I speak right now. I speak to everyone watching this. I speak healing. Lord, touch. Lord, heal. Cancer, heart disease, whatever it might be. There's leukemia. Someone right now is being healed right now of leukemia. Someone right now is being healed right now of cancer. I can see the tumor. I can see the tumor shriveling up right now. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. And not, not only those diseases, but there are pains in your body. There is someone watching right now with a pain in their hip. And if you'll start walking, you'll see in Yeshua, that's Hebrew for Jesus, in Yeshua's name, you are healed. There's someone else with pain in their back. And if you'll bend over, you're totally healed. Anything you need in your head, there are people with migraines, people with ringing in the ears, you are healed in Jesus' name. Uh, there are people with sinuses, allergies, anything in your head area, stuffy nose even, you're healed in Jesus' name. Uh, Steve, uh, the, the woman you were talking about, that party animal yeah. that got radically transformed, her sister gave a prophetic word at the Brownsville Revival that is, is, it's ready to happen right at this moment so now. Uh, tell me the, the impact that word had on you. The, the, the word, uh, what impacted me most was God is in a hurry. When she said that, the presence of God came into the building and uh, I'll never forget that night. It went on for hours. People repented. They screamed out uh, for, for forgiveness. And that tape has been taken and shown all over the world. And some one church showed it, church of 4,000 members, they showed that tape on a Sunday morning. That service lasted till four that afternoon. I'll tell people, you what, I want to see that exact word right now. And when you see this word, when right before your eyes, when you hear this word, I tell you, this is your moment to make connection with God. Let's take a look at it. I know that God loves people so much and he's, he's, he's in a hurry. He, he wants, he wants, he wants everyone. He, there's not much, not much more time. And he, he aches and he, he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. 